okay guys so uh let's begin numpy arrays then sorry i just got this thing okay so these are done so you know if it, if your system gets slow what you can do is uh, you can go here and just shut down these notebooks uh you don't want multiple notebooks to be running so if you shut it down uh they're going to be active but it's just going to be shut down the process is just going to be shut down so now you just have one more um uh notebook uh, available for you to run okay cool so uh, we have numpy and then there's also uh, or uh, stack over uh, overflows post which is available here right uh, and then what you're going to do is uh, what you're going to do is uh, you know have it uh, available for i mean there's a lot of things that you can do from this place but we're just going to run through certain things that are there in numpy now um all the things that we do in numpy Uh, are going to be adding uh, act, acting as the building blocks for statistics right so uh, if you're doing a course on machine learning and then you are learning basics of like matrix multiplication um and then um, you know matrix operations and all of that thing uh, it's going to be possible through numpy right so that's why numpy uh, acts as a base um often uh, you know whenever doing we are doing machine learning statistics and all that thing we load numpy because a lot of uh, the uh, uh, libraries are built on numpy right now again numpy um uh, is incredibly fast uh, because it uses some of the c libraries right so that's something that you need to know it's it's fast in terms of cal doing a lot of mathematical calculation so uh, very useful um, in in terms of usage for us right and again linear algebra is something that you can also be doing with it right so this will already be readily installed uh, it cannot go with you know it, in data science at least we cannot go without uh, not using numpy right so we can import numpy as np numpy as numpy nump and has np okay so here now we saw a version of arrays using this array library right now but we are going to also now the arrays that we are going to deal with numpy are going to be very different for um from the ones that we used in the array library right um or by default like on the default lists within um within uh, python right uh, so the numpy arrays have their own special abilities right now how do you make any default lists within python to a numpy array we begin by first creating a list right that is 1 2 3 4 and the my list is 1 2 3 4 now within that what we can do is we can say numpy dot array notice here we did a dot array right um and a is basically referring to the array of the array library right but what we are doing is taking num np dot array and then giving the list that is by default list and then converting it into an numpy array right so when it converts into a numpy array um it's going to be like this right but the only difference you're going to face uh in in this array and this array is that they're going to be both called arrays but you know this this initial type will not be available visible within this uh, array right or within the numpy array right it's just going to be an array like this right so you can create a matrix now you can see that you know uh, a lot of things will start unfolding right so you can create a matrix such as this uh you basically give an array you know you create an array and then um you create a list and then put three different lists within it right and then uh, you say numpy dot array and give that matrix this particular matrix which we assign the value and then you're basically going to get a matrix uh, in numpy in numpy right now this is 
that is ready to be used as a uh, used as um uh, you know numpy functions and all that thing so uh, very useful for us okay cool so moving on um take some time to run yes my system is slow okay anyways that's going to get you a numpy array now there are some built in functions uh, to generate arrays so we have a range with a single r um numpy dot arrange and if you say 0 to 10 it's going to give you 10 numbers but not the 10th one that is not 10 right so it's just going to give you up to 10 but not 10 right so um so that's the thing and it's going to give you 10 numbers at 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 the right so it's basically your start number and your end number and if you want to know what the argument is right you can do shift tap 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 um and it should basically give you the it's not giving me it's a little slow yeah so if you want to know what the arguments and all that are you can just use shift tab or just look up uh, within the python uh, documentation there okay so the next part is arrange with uh, a step of two Right, so it's going to be 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Right, so that's another array that we have. We have zeros and ones, uh, np dot zeros will basically give you uh, with uh, three, it's going to, going to give you an array with three zeros. Now, notice that you'll have zero dot. This is a notation in NumPy, so don't get uh, alarmed by what that is. It's just a zero and a notation that. Uh, Python NumPy has adopted, right? Similarly, if you want a five by five zero matrix, you can just give np dot zeros five by five when you're going to get that particular matrix. Uh, np ones uh, is going to be again the similar fashion and you can also give it a matrix also, right? So you're going to get that very easily. Then you have lint space, uh, very useful for giving um, you know, creating charts, uh, samples and all that thing. But yes, again, uh, it's going to be used in a lot of linear algebra also, right? So here in LinSpace, you can start with zero, end with 10, and then give three equal spaced numbers, like evenly spaced numbers between zero and 10, right? So, <clears throat> Evenly spaced numbers is going to be 0, 5, 10. 5 minus 0 is 5. 10 minus 5 is 5, right? So that's evenly spaced. Similarly, you can do that into 50 components also. So within 0 to 10, you're going to take 50 components. And you're going to notice that the difference between each of these components is always going to be equal and linear in, in nature, right? So very useful function. Now, I, as we know, we have this a diagonal one 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 that we have here right so if you just give it the number there it's going to give you these things there right now we have a random uh, uh, so this is just basically random generators you have numpy dot random dot random int one comma five so basically this gives you a random number every time you run this particular code Okay, this is still running for me. I don't know how much time this guy will take to run. Okay, so basically this generates a random integer. Random generates uh, a number between zero and one, and the number of, uh, uh, and you can also give how many random numbers you want to generate within a range. Right, so that's the thing that you need to keep in mind, random int, random integer. Then you also have a random uh, matrix with five comma five. Again, these random generations are basically used for simulations. A lot of Monte Carlo simulations and all of that thing are based on random generation. So hence, this is um, really useful in, the, in that. Okay. 
cool so uh, return a sample uh, or samples uh, standard normal diffusion so this is basically random n now you know if you uh, generally try to generate random numbers right the more you gen, gen the more number of random numbers you generate let's say uh, let's say random between 1 to 10 right and I, if i keep generating um, you know hundreds of random numbers with this particular function right um and if i just create a histogram on top of it right and uh, i just plot it you're going to see that more or less it's going to be having uh, very similar values right it's not uh, like uh, spread uh, as much uh, as a bell curve right but um when you do it with random n it it basically does into uh, it it generates random numbers in um in a normal distribution right so um things like uh, let me just show you what a normal distribution is so your data will basically be distributed something like this normal distribution right So this is your normally distributed data. Ideally, you know, you'll see it's not what whatever example we had was not normally distributed. But if you had to generate uh, random numbers with with basically um, you know with a standard normal distribution, this is how we'll be doing it, right? So you're going to use a random n uh, function there, and it it's going to be from minus one to uh, one. um is going to generate values from minus 1 to 1 whereas the rand function generates value from 0 to 1 okay random int um so this is again an integer uh, function that we have um again just a repeat of the function that i wrote here right um so that's uh, there and in case you want to give it from 1 to 100 and 10 digits then you just give another comma and then get that value there right so array attributes and methods so np dot arrange integer so we have two different arrays that we have here now what are the things that we can do on top of uh, arrays right so this is one array that we have here one array uh, that we have here right so 0 to 23 and 10 to 39 now what can we do with these arrays right uh we can basically shape uh, these arrays now i don't know if this code has finished running i'm just going to say stop something not running this okay my system has become a lot slower okay i'm just going to continue basically um if you have your system and you, you are running it um just look at that uh, particular number right so basically here you want to have a uh, you know you have uh, 23 24 numbers right so what you can do is uh, you can reshape right so for example you can just put 5 here and you got 25 numbers okay um david yeah and uh, you know i can close some apps but my office uh, processes are running so i cannot close it right now <laughs> just how it is cool okay anyways guys so i'm just going to continue it the reason this is error is um was showing a point so basically you have 25 values and then if you want to reshape it to a 5 by 
matrix is not going to do it right so you'll have to basically so if you have 24 numbers it's going to be like 6 bar 4 uh, or 4 by 6 matrix right or you can get 25 numbers to get a uh, reshape of 5 by 5 matrix right? so but basically it's what you what's going to do is it's going to take this long single dimension array and then it's going to convert it into an array which is a 5 by 5 matrix like such as this this particular guy right so that's the advantage of your reshape function so it's it basically casts that array to a more um, matrix format right and what are the other things that we can do? So we're going to use this particular array. Uh, we can get the max, we can get the arg max. Now arg max is basically which position is the maximum value presented, right? So it's zero, one, two, three, four. And this is the position where maximum value is present. You have min, then arg min, um, then you have shape, uh, which basically tells you what's the shape of the array, right? And, and then, uh, we can also use reshape uh, to um, convert it into an array that uh, in, in a shape that we want to do, right? Um, so reshape dot shape is going to be one comma twenty five. Uh, previously, this is twenty five comma one, right? So that's um, how shape and reshape is going to be helped. And shape basically helps you just get a shape out of it, right? What's the shape of that particular array? Okay, so that's reshape 25 comma 1, 1 comma 25. This is fairly or across. And then, um, okay, just the shape of it will give you 25 comma 1, right? So this is basically multiple ways of playing around uh, the data, right? And then last uh, but not least, this is uh, we end up using a lot of these. So arrays data type, right, uh, can be accessed by saying dot D type versus looking at the array in the previous example where it is mentioned in the front. Here you need to basically say dot D type to get a data type here, right? So that's basically in a nutshell your NumPy arrays.